Hey, this is the Swedish Guitar Nerd, and uh, a year ago about I uh, did a video about an amp, the Blackstar HT5, and uh, basically none of the comments were about the amp, all of the comments were about this guy, girl, whatever. So I thought I'd do a demo of this. Uh, this is my own Yamaha SG200. And it's also one of the few uh, vintage guitars I own. Um, the SG range uh, is, as you can tell, of course, uh, Yamaha's version of Les Paul's SGs, hmm, hence the name. And uh, yeah, Gibson style guitars, solid body guitars, basically. Uh, when they were in this, like this is the the lowest range. I think there was a 100 as well, but this is the 200. So, but they were like 3,000, 1,000, 2,000, and uh, when there were three digits, it was like more. This is more like an SG. Uh, when there were four digits, it was more less Paul style. Then it had like a much thicker body. Uh, mahogany backs, uh, maple tops, uh, very much like Les Pauls. This is a, as you can see, one rather slim, uh, just one layer of wood here. And the uh, necks were different too. I've tried uh, one of the, the SG 2000, uh, 3000 actually, and uh, the necks were much bigger. This is a very, very slim neck. Uh, and these were made and are still made, some of them, the the higher numbers are still made, and these aren't made. And this one is, uh, it's hard to date these. And I've looked at several web pages actually. And let's see, where's the, it's kind of hard to see the number. It starts with 307. And it's a six digit number made in Japan and um, uh, based on ads I've seen because I've found all ads about this guy. Uh, uh, it's probably from 84, 85 somewhere. And back in those days, well, Gibson were trying to get back on track after uh, some bad years and... Uh, well, if you're gonna buy a guitar from that era, uh, you should buy a Japanese-made one because they were making copies of Gibson guitars that were so much better than Gibson guitars. Uh, even Yamaha made, uh, earlier than this one, they made actual copies. They made like real Les Pauls and stuff. But then they made uh, Gibson, sorry, so... Um, and they had... Some trials where they, yeah, basically stopped production or they still made them, but it, they couldn't sell them in the US. And, uh, well, the interesting thing about the body shape of this one, I have to say this while I remember it, is that if you take this part, it is actually like a, like a Les Paul. And the upper part is also like this part. They are like mirrored. Because if you have a Les Paul Jr., the upper part doesn't look exactly like the lower part. So, yeah, interesting design. Um, yeah, let's talk about this guitar then. Uh, from what I could find, it's not easy to find information. W yeah, and uh, what can I tell you? It's a set neck guitar. I actually thought it was a neck through guitar because uh, you can see there's no like. Nothing that hints that it's a set neck guitar. And you can even see there's a piece of wood going like straight up here. So I thought it was a neck through, but if you look really close, you can see there's actually a line here under the paint that marks that, yeah, this is a set neck guitar. It ends here. Uh, but it's made so nicely. Yeah. Why shouldn't other companies make it like this? Why is there always like a 
bulk here and the piece that's like sticking out it should be smooth like this and um, yeah it has this nice old white color that it's uh, yeah it's kind of i don't know if it came like this but with age it, at least it has come to be in this kind of pearl color actually it shines in all different colors depending on the light and it's very sweet and it's of course polyurethane so it's not wore off anywhere so everyone that wants like the distressed ones well this won't happen with these vintage guitars they will stay the same and is that a bad thing really um yeah the neck tilt is compared to a gibson nothing which is a good thing, but on the other hand, you don't have something to save the neck from, or the headstock from breaking off. Uh, the, I was talking about the headstock, actually, the headstock angle. And uh, I've seen a few pictures of broken headstocks from these guitars as well. So, yeah. But I suppose it's a bit more solid than the Gibson one that's like pointing this way. We have proper Yamaha tuners, made in Japan, still working great, and yeah. Uh, the wood and in the body is uh, NATO, the neck is NATO as well, and that's like uh, similar to mahogany, but cheaper. And... Uh, I would think it's a rather soft wood, actually. This neck moves a bit. It's kind of hard to keep it in tune, actually. Uh, and it's very thin <laughs> for being a Gibson-style guitar. It's very thin. It's like... Yeah. And the other thing is the, the string width. It's not like a regular Gibson would be. They are The strings are much closer together on a Gibson. This is more like a like a Strat Fender style guitar. So going from a Strat guitar to this one, I'm usually a Strat player. It's not that much difference. Uh, this is of course a short scale, Nick. So it's like the distance from here to here is shorter than on a Strat, but it feels very much the same. Uh, the fretboard is rosewood and the radius of it is super flat so I I don't know as I said it's hard to find any information uh, I'd say it's even flatter than 12 inch I'd say it's 14 inch because it's so extremely flat and it plays wonderful it has these uh, jumbo frets and it's yeah plays like a dream very slim neck very flat radius and uh, yeah the action is really low as well and you have the regular uh, sg uh, controls a three-way switch two volumes two tones and uh, yeah a regular tutomatic bridge basically then you have the yamaha pickups that are something really out of the ordinary they are to me, the best passive pickups I've ever heard. And very clear, very... Yeah. It has all the things I look for in pickups. It has this uh, brightness. It's very punchy. It has uh, a lot of uh, upper mid-range. It just sounds good not muddy at all even though it's humbuckers and it's very it's not super output uh, maybe that's a key to it and they sound fantastic so well not much more to say uh, I bought this for nothing I've seen this sell I've seen guitars like this the SG200 sold for at least seven times more than what I paid for it so if you want to grab a real bargain look for these ones uh, apparently they are getting noticed more now 
so hurry. Because, yeah. If you buy this one, you'll never play Gibson again. I'll tell you that. Uh, okay, let's hear it then. I'll start with a clean sound as usual and uh, then add some overdrive and finally some high gain. So you can hear what these magnificent pickups do. I've turned the tone knob off slightly on the neck pickup. So yeah, here we go. <laughs>
yeah, I like this guitar, and uh, yeah, I hope you can notice the like infinite sustain of it. It's very well made, and it's just yeah, you can hold a note forever on this one. And so yeah, my only collector's guitar that I have in my possession. Otherwise, it's just cheap crap, you know that. So this has been the Swedish Guitar Nod demoing my Yamaha SG200. And if you have some extra information on the Yamaha SGs, please leave a comment. Uh, it's really hard to find real good information about them. See you soon. Bye.